Good morning and good afternoon, world, planet Earth. My name is Stephen Beecham, and you're watching the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy Podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tong. Uh oh, uh oh. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. It is episode 96 of the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. This is our complimentary piece, our long format kind of discussion, kick back, dig deep into the latest stories that came out this week from the Apple Byte. And as always, this show is all about you, for you. Kind of by you, although Beach and Tong, I mean, I guess it's by us, but it's for them, right? Yes, it's by us, for them, but they contribute so well with their phone calls, and it, it makes the show a lot more fun Like when we get to the end and oh, listen yeah. to all the phone calls. We love it like that. So it's 1-800-616-2638. That's the number that you just have to call, leave your name, where you're from, and your message. We love how you represent where you're calling us from, but that's the way to get involved in the show. Talk about topics that you like. Keep it under a minute. We are the training sessions have served us well, especially this week, right? Like, oh yeah, I think everyone everyone stayed under a minute except for one caller that we aren't going to use. <laughs> yeah, we won't use him. But stick around after the show because we might have a special <laughs> voicemail we're going to play. True, that that will be for people that aren't listening to the podcast. So let's just jump into it. There's, I love it because right before an Apple event, so much news starts dropping. This week is no different, and I think the cool thing and Beach. You'll be happy about this one. The, really, the top story this week comes to us from the Wall Street Journal in a report that Apple has now finally really taken investing in original content seriously with a $1 billion allocated amount of money, of cold hard cash, to spend on original programming. And this is, how long have we been talking about this? Like for them, if they really want to get in the game, they got to get in the game. Oh, this is this is huge. I mean, $1 billion, that... that Netflix is actually spending still a lot more. I six, think six billion in 2017, yeah, bro. Six yeah. billion. They're upping it like an extra billion or something, right? But one yep. billion's a good start. And how? And I was going to ask you, Brian, how do we get a chunk of that? How do, we we create content? How do me and you yeah, well, get a chunk of that? People use Apple's apps to listen to our stuff for free. <laughs> oh, but we do we do read we do read a sponsor, so yeah. I can't put that put that past them. But let I just want to give you guys and gals a little perspective of how this whole industry is shaping up. We know that Netflix clearly changed the game and really pushed forward. They started though, and they became who they are today because they had, guess what, hit shows. So we talk about what Apple is trying to do. Unfortunately, right now, Apple's two shows per se are Carpool Karaoke, which is entertaining, but I'm not going to pay for a service to watch that. And then we had Planet of the Apps, which although the idea and I think the intent was fun, the actual execution of the show, everyone's pretty much poo-pooing on it. So if those are your first two to get people interested in a service, that's not going to cut it. Now, Apple is investing $1 billion. The other aspect of this, if you compare it to what HBO is doing, you know, the home of Game of Thrones, the home oh, of Silicon best. Valley, right? Great, amazing content over there. Um, well, they, they're they spending about $2 billion. So Apple's budget about half of what Time Warner is doing. But what you're seeing is really this race for content where everyone is now putting them on, on these, you know, really subscription based services, even Netflix, right? Six billion dollars. Can you keep up with what is on Netflix? You you know what, Beach, no you don't way. even have a subscription yet. Still. No, but you're I'm, so I'm behind. You're so behind. <laughs> I'm way behind. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get one a, though. If I had a free extra person to put on my plan, I would give it to you. <laughs> but I don't. Because my whole family just rides rides on my coattails, bro. It's fine. I'm surviving with uh, Amazon Prime and HBO Go, so I'm. Good. I don't know if you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you heard this one also, but Shonda Rhimes, right? Shonda Land. Uh, if you know shows like Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get with Get Away with Murder, she left ABC and is now on board exclusively with Netflix. Oh wow! Like that's how powerful Netflix has become as a destination for original content. Now we're Apple comes in here, they have a billion dollars to spend. That Roughly, you're talking about maybe, if you're really allocating that properly, you you could invest in about, let's say, seven, somewhere between seven to 10 legitimate projects. But the key thing is that they have to come out with some hits, right? Oh, for like, sure. House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, those were hits. I watched Netflix because of House of Cards, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do the damn thing, right? You need something like that, and then there's also comes a point, Beecham, how many services do you actually subscribe to right now that are original content services? I mean, you probably have Prime, but do you have any others? Just just two right now. Just two. 
just two services and those would and be- cable i mean cable you know yeah so cable that's too. Three. but what, what are the services you're locked into right now right now amazon prime uh hbo go and comcast cable that's about it okay really. yeah so do you think that you're at a saturation point where you already have too many services or do you feel like there is room for another one or two for you you know i've been trying out all these different services like i tried hulu for a month i wasn't totally into it i tried uh was another thing i tried for a month um uh youtube tv i tried that for a month it was great it worked great but it didn't have enough stuff so i mean i think i'm cool right now like i don't i don't need a ton of content you know what i mean you know for me i literally i don't subscribe to apple music i'm waiting for something compelling enough Although, you know, I have a bunch of different music services that I'm on, but Apple Music, for me to, if they're really going to, like they have so far, put the stuff behind a behind Apple Music, and if they come out with a really great show, I think then that is a advantage for them with their ecosystem to be like, not only do you have our Apple Music service, you have our shows. I'm just curious, people that are watching right now, are they, do they feel like they have room to add another service on top of what they're doing right now? Like, where are you at? Tell us, like, are you, are you subscribed to three or four services, five or six I mean, you know, you got Hulu, Amazon Prime, Netflix, your cable provider, HBO Go. I'm curious where everyone is at because at the same time, I don't think we've hit our saturation point. Like, I feel like if the shows are good enough, I'm definitely keeping Netflix no matter what. I'm definitely keeping cable because of my sports. But then after that, Amazon Prime is just a gimme, right? It's part of being an Amazon user, but I don't really watch stuff on Amazon Prime. I, I could fit another one in there. Is it going to be Apple? I I don't know. They have to They have to show me they got the goods, so... This is going to be interesting how it shakes out. You know, a lot of when you see people like Shonda Rhimes leaving ABC, you're going to that's not the only big name that's going to leave. You're you're starting to see studios or content creators or writers and producers go directly to Netflix now. Right now, Netflix is the leader. It's probably going to stay that way for a while. But I think there's still room for other competitors to kind of slide in here. Yeah, you know that there's a bunch of producers probably hitting up Apple right now being like, yo, I got some ideas, you know, Mm -hmm. but Apple also has to get out of their way and let them be creative and make what they want to make instead of like trying to control everything and, you know, trying to censor what they're trying to do. Because we've seen that with Disney in the uh, Han Solo movie with two directors leaving in like the same week or something. And then they brought in uh, Ron Howard. They're like, oh, Ron Howard's going to fix it all. And everyone's like, ah, Ron, you know, Ron Howard, what's he going to do? Exciting. But so, so they really have to get out of their way and just let them produce and make cool stuff. Well, I think though, I mean, not to say, well, actually, because I don't do that, <laughs> but I do think the difference with, with the Star Wars franchise is that they have a voice, they have a tone, they have this kind of, they have a way that they need to carry this feeling throughout all their movies. And if a director isn't on board on that, they're not going to drastically change the tone of the franchise i think rogue rogue one was a unique offering because it's kind of its own side story so it could feel like star wars but kind of not that's why i liked it a lot some people didn't but if you're talking about a han solo movie you can't get super creative i mean we've even seen this with directors for the marvel universe but i think what's different with the apple kind of platform is that they just want the best content i don't think apple's going to interfere with it this whole idea of them saying it has to be music related uh that's gonna have to go from the wayside if they really want some unique offerings that no one can put out there. Like don't tie it to a theme of music or a theme of apps or a theme of your services. Forget that. You just need to basically outbid people for the best shows and movies that are coming out. They're sitting on 260 plus billion dollars. So out of all those companies out there, they have, they literally have the cash to do it. It just comes down to in their DNA, are they willing to throw out all that money with the risk of, it not working or not because ingrained in a company like that, their culture is like, we need returns on margins. We need, we need to make a profit. Guess what? Shows and movies don't always make a profit. So there's a gamble there. And I think it's like kind of maybe changing their mentality or their DNA of how they think because content creation is totally different than product creation. Yeah. I have one more quick thought too. Like you're saying Apple is like concentrating on like music based uh, television shows and stuff like that. Like they got to get away from making commercials because Planet of the App was like a commercial for uh, Apple's App Store. Exactly. The, mu- the music stuff that they're doing, that's a commercial for Apple Music. They're like, it seems like everything they're creating is like a commercial for Apple, sort of, you know? Or uh, what is it? The uh, car- Carpool Karaoke. I'm sure all those songs are like, find it on Apple Music. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they just got to get away from that and just make something that's 
totally out out of the ordinary of Apple, you know. Now you have you have like now some of the competitors, right? It's Netflix, it's Amazon, it's HBO, uh, Hulu, CBS All Access, our parent company, is coming out with their uh, Star Trek Discovery show, which is kind of one of their to them. That's like that's our bread and butter to get people in, right? You got to have a show like that. Apple is going to get into it. We're probably not going to see any real fruits of this labor until next year. So don't expect all of a sudden to drop like this amazing show on us because that stuff just takes time. Uh, you have other content creators that are trying to get in it. So it's going to get crowded really fast in the next year. But at the same time, I mean, it's just going to come down to how much disposable income are people willing to allocate because they're watching less TV. They're going to be putting that money now arguably into these services. So if your cable bill was around 50, 60 bucks, the whole goal was not to pay 50, 60 bucks for cable anymore. So what, you're going to maybe allocate 30, 40 bucks to these services? I think that's, that's we're going to find out where consumers really fall in that. Yeah, that's a better number, definitely. Better number. So uh, just I think it's really exciting, though. I'm, I'm happy to hear it as someone who, who has been begging for Apple to create original content. They struck out on their TV subscription service. We know that. That that was a big fail, in my opinion, but other people may argue it's not. I think it was because now everyone is doing it. Everyone is making money from it. Uh, but we'll see how this plays out. I think this this is a good sign that they actually care about this. They're jumping to it, um, and we'll see how it all pans out. It just comes down to the people that make those decisions over there. But uh, also kind of some other exciting stuff in the Apple TV world. We talked about how the HomePod firmware from a couple weeks ago revealed that a new Apple TV – will most likely if all you know all the strings in in the developer firmware pan out that it will be a 4k based apple tv um kind of some small little things about apple tv espn just announced and uh, the app is officially out from what i gather i didn't i didn't get it on my apple tv yet but their new app will allow you to basically stream up to four games at one time <laughs> via a split screen so this is like perfect for the college football season coming up yeah. i mean if if you don't want to look outside for the day, you can take full advantage of this. I mean, I think it's I think it's amazing because we've always been used to picture and picture. Yeah. This is four games at one time. That is pretty cool, but I, I can't imagine watching four games at one time. But I can I can see, I could see this like in a bar or something, you know, like at some, someone's bar. Like you can have a bunch of multiple games on the screen. But I I don't know if I'd watch four games at the same time. I I can you do like game separate game games? Game. Like, can I have like a golf tournament one and a football game? That, you know, that's what's really cool about this. You know, I like the fact. So here's what. Yes. So, for example, it doesn't have to be sports games. What it appears is ESPN put out a video clip um, and it shows off how not only it doesn't have to be four screens. It can be two. It can be a split screen of two different types of programming. It doesn't have to be sports games. It's all stuff that's on ESPN. It could be a big screen with two little windows. It, it can be versatile depending on how you use it. They also said potentially one of those screens could be used dedicated for like scoreboards, fantasy stats, that because come tough. on, a f if you had three screens and a fantasy stat ticker in the bottom right of those four screens, that's kind of cray. That's like, pretty that dope. Is oh, here we go. They got golf. Time. They got golf on there. Yeah, they, when they have golf events on ESPN, right? <laughs> this is all ESPN events. So totally. that, that makes it pretty sweet. But what I like about this is finally it's taken so long, but these are the type of apps that we want to see on Apple's platform that make it unique that you can't do anywhere else. I mean, I know you can do split screen in other ways, but in order just like they finally were like, hey, let's make the iPad Pro a unique product of its own with iOS 11. That's what they need to do with Apple TV. Not only does it need to be 4K, it needs to have killer apps like this to be able to do that. To be able to make it special, to make it feel like it's worth our money. This is cool. This is really cool. I'm watching this demo. I, <laughs> I hadn't all, seen this before, all. and I want this on everything. <laughs> you know, I want this on Comcast. Everything. It's cool. So that's really cool. Also, another app that's coming out uh, reports point to August the 22nd. Voodoo, which is a video service. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with it, but I'll tell you why I know about it is because I bought the very first Voodoo box. They had like a an actual set top box that I paid $300 for to get access to video streaming. This is before video streaming was like built into everything. Yeah. That guy, right? I'm that guy. <laughs> but um, they're, they're making an app coming out uh, August 22nd. But what I find is really interesting about Voodoo is that one of the things that made them special is they do HD streaming, of not only HD streaming, but 4K streaming content depending on it, it's, it's typically linked to some of the most recent movies. 
but they're one of the few places that is doing blockbuster movies, if not the only 4K streaming through your set, through whatever device you're using. So they're bringing this app to the Apple TV in August 22nd. Now, the reason why that is interesting to me is because we've had all these rumors about a 4K Apple TV coming this year. A Voodoo TV app that supports, or sorry, a Voodoo movie and TV app that supports 4K content. It also supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos surround sound. If you haven't heard nice. it, that's like blows your mind. Like this app will be able to do it with your Apple TV. So it just seems like this marriage of we are getting a 4K Apple TV sometime this year. All the hints are there. I don't think it's going to come next year. I think we're going to see it sometime this fall or at least for the holiday season. That's cool. You think yeah, you think they're going to announce it at the next big event? Probably probably not. Uh, I hope I hope so. Well, the thing is their next event, we still don't know the day for it. Typically it's early September, so we will know, you know, we'll talk about it later, but other rumors point to right an Apple Watch, iPhone, and then Apple TV all announced in September. I mean, that's that's a lot of stuff, but I think they've waited this long to kind of end this year on a high note. Like, let's do the damn thing. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's what I think. So Voodoo, I'm not too familiar with Voodoo. It's like a Netflix, but it's Walmart. And it. what does it cost? Do you know how much it costs a month? It's a, so it's a free service. It's just a video streaming service where you can buy movies. You can also watch movies for free. Oh, um, wow. It's not a Netflix. There's no subscription base. It's just basically a video service. And also, if you're someone like me who buys Blu-rays, um, you get a co- digital code to be able to watch those movies digitally as well, like through streaming. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. So it's just another option. I The only reason why I like it also is like, because studios are jerks, sometimes they don't give you an iTunes code and you have to watch it through like the Warner Brothers app or a different app. Voodoo typically plays nice with everyone, whether it's Disney, Marvel content or Warner Brothers studio stuff or Paramount. So ultimately it works on Voodoo and then it's platform agnostic. So that's kind of cool too. That's neat. So there you go. Um, last thing before we get to our little break the Apple TV, we this I don't 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 believe this, but you can look at this. Don't, <laughs> I'm checking it I out. don't know. What to, I don't know what to think, but there's this micro blogging Chinese site where a lot of people leak stuff on it. And allegedly someone leaked what is purportedly potentially an actual Apple TV like television set like a television in, right? like, in, in like a testing room. Yeah, like. <laughs> What is believed to be a television? There's like other photos down there um, that you can click on. It's like in this white glowy room. It looks basically like a nice big silver flat TV, but it has like an Apple logo on the back on the rear side that everyone's like, uh, so is this an actual TV? Is this an old ass picture that they're not doing anything with it? To me, it still doesn't make sense for Apple to make and release a TV purely from a profitability standpoint, purely from the fact that the market is dominated. It's not It's not easy for someone to be like, hey, here's just another TV that happens to have an Apple logo on it. It has to do so much more differently and they don't need to. They just, just sell an Apple TV box. So yeah, yeah. take it for what it's worth. It's out there. Um, but if you're listening to this, you're, it's okay you didn't see it because it's probably fake. <laughs> do you think maybe like maybe there's a possibility Apple might have like developed this a long time ago and then like shelved yeah. it or something? Yeah, yeah totally. I mean, Apple has done things. Remember, they made the iPad before the iPhone. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So <laughs> the things that we see have been, the things that we finally see in our hands have been in development for like four or five years. So a lot of times when Apple was like on that downturn, they knew they were on the downturn. They're laughing at shows like us. They're like, dude, Apple, what are you doing? But then they're like, ah, I guess wait for four or five years, then we'll show you. <laughs> people like, aren't ready yet. People are complaining, and it's going to take four or five years for them to turn that ship around. <laughs> so, you know, we'll we'll see we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, let's let's take a little moment for a little breather, shall we? Let's do it, man. Go ahead. All right, check this. Today's show is brought to you by Jamp. Now, our friendly sponsor for the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy this week. As your business grows. So does your supply of tech equipment. And as a result, you know what? It gets harder to keep track of everyone's Macs, iPhones, and iPads. Thankfully, Jamf now helps you manage your Apple devices from anywhere. We have techs with our company that use this product. So you can keep up with your equipment. It's a breeze. If you need to secure an iPad that your sales rep lost on a recent business trip because they were out drinking too long, they can do that. Jamf now allows you to configure settings, protect sensitive information, even lock or wipe a device no matter where you are. That way you can focus on your business and there is no IT expertise needed. That means someone like my mom 
might be able to do champ. Is that I don't know right yet. That picture is that your mom? No, that's not my mom. Okay. That's not my mom. But that but that woman is beautiful. So now check this out. Our listeners can set up their first three devices for free. You can add more for just two bucks a month per device. Start securing your business today. Go to Jamf. That's spelled J A M F dot com backslash crunchy to create a free account and set up three free devices today. That's Jamf. J A M F dot com slash crunchy. So thank you for that. And uh, I think also, look, there's a lot of developers, upcoming aspiring developers that are starting to build their business. It's a really cool resource to use. So I would say give it a shot because it also keeps our show going too. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And it's free for the first three devices or something, right? Three. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't, why don't you just do that for yourself? You can't lose. Can't lose. All right, let's jump over to Apple watch stuff. A lot of juicy stuff here. Um, this kind of was the week of Apple Watch stuff until the Apple TV news dropped. Um, according to reports, the Apple Watch Series 3 is in final testing, which means it will be hitting mass production in the very near future, which also means it is expected to line up to be available to ship out sometime in September. That would align conveniently around the same time as, guess what? the Apple iPhone. Uh, So that is a report from the Economic Daily News coming out of Taiwan based on their supply chain relationships. But I thought this cool story, um, we've heard a lot about LTE being part of the iPhone. This week was really kind of hammered home that LTE will be part of this next Apple Watch. I'm sorry, I said iPhone earlier. LTE will be part of this next Apple Watch. Uh, KGI Securities Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, our favorite favorite scooper, Ming-Chi Kuo, says that the iPhone is expected to launch this fall with LTE support. It'll be the first time, obviously, for the Apple Watch, but it's unlikely to support direct phone calling. Hmm. And a lot of people are hoping that, oh, I could use this as a phone. It's not necessarily the case just yet. It it sounds a little gray, but what the report says is that because Apple is still trying to work on perfecting the actual user interface and data transmission – of making just a call directly from your Apple Watch. They do he does believe that we pro, we may not see it this year. However, the Apple Watch will support services like FaceTime audio, Skype, right? We have these voice over IP services that the Apple Watch could use and could leverage that LTE data. So that is that's the latest report about this Apple Watch. The main the faces or the watch faces are still expected to be the same size. 38 millimeters, 42, 8, 42 millimeters. But the real main selling point this time around, according to the reports, is that it will be a uh, the LTE version of the watch. And there's people that are going to want that. I I have an Apple Watch first gen, so maybe I'll do the LTE one. I don't know. It it would have to. I would want it to be able. The thing is, I don't want to call. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't, don't want to put I, up. I, I have no problem doing that. You know, but is that is that this is because of real estate on the watch? Like they're there's they're trying to find room for antennas and room for other things in the watch so they they're getting rid of the L, or they're getting rid of the direct call ability well they're actually saying it's more of a kind of apple perfecting the feature in the software so here's the other issue it's good you brought this up because i forgot to bring it up the actual apple watch you know it doesn't have enough space to put in a full on sim card kind of like our phones right they oh, didn't yeah. design it like that way in the first place mm-hmm. but it will support what's called eSIM it stands for embedded SIM, which is you know not a actual SIM card you put in, but a chip that is in the watch. It'll be able to pair with your iPhone and basically sync it up so that you'll have that same similar phone number. At least that's what the reports are saying. But the other trick about this is they have been talking to U.S. carriers who are on board to sell and support this Apple Watch. But the eSIM technology, not the SIM card technology, but this embedded SIM technology isn't supported by every carrier. And so when you talk about internationally – that could be a problem where stories were saying, hey, look, this eSIM isn't going to be supported by every carrier. So that means you won't everyone won't be able to use LTE for this Apple Watch. It'll kind of start as a slow rollout depending on where you live more than anything else, which which is kind of a bummer. But if that's just the way it is, that's the way it is, right? There's no space for a SIM card. So so do you think people should wait for the the next watch after that if they want to get calling on their <laughs> phone or <laughs> well, I think I think well, I think we have to ultimately we always have to see officially what Apple tells us about it. Uh, maybe maybe they get it done in time, right? We don't really know this yet, but yeah. if it's 
if you've always wanted phone calling on your watch, I think that I'm more than happy using FaceTime audio. In fact, FaceTime audio sounds better oh, yeah. than LTE call anyways. So if that's the case, bring it on. I, I'm totally cool with that. It always trips me out when someone calls me and it's like through VoIP, V-O-I-P or whatever. Because uh, it sounds so different. It sounds like they're right next to you almost. You know, like the quality is like really a oh, it's super. Better. It's super nice. Yeah, it is cool. So, you know, the, we'll see We'll see how that all plays out. Other kind of reports are just saying that the form factor, which was roughly rumored to change, it's not going to change. We talked about the watch faces staying the same. Um, and then CNBC earlier said this week that, yes, the LTE reports are correct. Uh, they also threw out, no one has thrown this out yet, that the Apple Watch Series 3 will launch alongside the iPhone 8 at the September event. We haven't heard any other report confirm that or do, or also say yes, that's happening. So we'll wait and see. We still don't even have a date yet again for this new this next Apple event. So I'm just gonna we're gonna we're gonna chill on it. Cool. We're gonna Apple Watch and chill. <laughs> Apple Watch and chill. You wait, I forgot. You don't have an Apple Watch. Would you get an Apple Watch if you could call you, from it? I, I would. If I if I could call from it, I, I think I would. I would get one. Just because, you know, it's just it's cool. My watch my Casio which is really old. It's dying right now. So I'm like in the market yeah, yeah, for a new yeah. watch. So I have been thinking about it and looking at Apple watches and stuff. And uh, if I can make a call from it, that would be awesome. Boo, yeah. So people, people, I think, look, the, the rumblings are pointing at either September the 6th or September the 12th, which is a uh, Tuesday. It's, it, we'll see where it falls. Again, we, we don't really know. No one's even given an inkling. So that's less than uh, there a month away, man. That's coming up. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get to this. Uh, we've talked about the iPhone so much. We wanted to kind of push it down a little lower because there are other stuff that was going on this week. Uh, this is my favorite story. This came out fresh today. I like this, this is too. new. This is new news. So McDonald's put out this promotional email earlier today and then people started looking at it like, wait, what, what, what is going on here? <laughs> it appears that McDonald's used an iPhone 8 mock-up and an app mock-up to show off like a new app for McDonald's that has a pickup order, restaurant locator with a special 25% off discount. But the funny thing is in this email, they used an iPhone 8 as the example to yeah. show off their new app and promotion. This is so hilarious. I mean, did they get that from Apple or how, how how does this happen? No, no. See, I think, look, I don't know where they got this, but there's a couple flaws in this whole picture here. So first of all, uh, yes, it is. It looks like it's from an iPhone mock-up, right? We've seen plenty of these throughout the internet. I mean, this one looks like one of them. The other thing is if you look at the signal bars on the top left of the phone, those are dots. Yeah. Though, in iOS 10, they were dots, but in iOS 11, which is the new operating system, they are actually, they went back to bars. Huh. So that was a giveaway that some graphic artist, a genius, he's a genius I, McDonald's is, marketing guy, whoever did I, I'm this. Gonna me, I'm going to give him that. I will give him <laughs> or her that actually. I will totally give them that. Genius. Very smart. Look how much we're talking, dude, the Apple bite is talking about McDonald's. I'm loving it. Uh, I'm loving it. No, but that is that is if I have a feeling this graphic artist is is a tech fan, you know, because this is a very smart thing to do because you got more attention to this uh, to this app, you know. Like they don't need anymore. Hey, you know, on that song that I pulled up, go to like the last ten seconds. I've got to hear the ending of that. I'm loving it. Move yeah. your feet, rock to the beat, hungry for the music, gotta eat. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. it. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. It's too good. It's great. It's like the R&B version. R&B. So thank you, McDonald's, for the lead, the top story of the day. Uh, put a smile on my face and get a little JT singing that I'm loving it, McDonald's style. That's JT? You know, yeah, it's just, yeah. Do you know what? It was actually an original song and then was adapt, adapted for a TV ad. But he has a song called I'm Loving It. That That's is so original funny. JT song. You can look it up, everybody. And then they twisted it around and manipulated it for the McDonald's ads, which were like, I actually was like, oh, dude, that sounds good. That's cool. Yeah. If McDonald's, like, if I wrote a song, McDonald's came, like, I want to buy your song. I'm like, sure. Yeah. What, when do you need it? Sure. I'll send it right away. I'll, I'll change the lyrics and include <laughs> the words fries, chicken McNuggets, and fish filet in Big there for Mac, you. I would, special sauce. 
Shoot, they should talk to the Apple Buy. We could create a dope video for them. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, yeah. Call us. Holler. McDonald's. Apple. All you guys. <laughs> holler at us. Uh, we showed you some of those inside the Apple TV photos earlier or talked about it uh, for people that are listening. Check this out. Um, there were two leaks of videos, blurry videos oh, from yes. inside potentially purportedly allegedly let's just throw those words out inside the factory a factory allegedly of workers polishing rows of what is believed to be iphone 8s and then another video showed them all hanging on a rack like just dangling there potentially this could be Foxconn, who knows but this is all leaked blurryish. but but now you can at least see stuff it looks video. Kinda, it looks kind of legit. I mean, you don't know what phone legit. that is. I think it looks pretty legit to me. I don't yeah. know what people think they're watching. Is that legit? Is that like a yes? Legit? I don't. I, <laughs> I think it's. It's a long line of long line of uh, workers right there, just Look, working away. Those those people are working hard, and if someone complains about their job, like I'm gonna show. I'm just let's put things in perspective, man. Like, oh my gosh, right? Right. Like, could you? That's what we don't think about. Like, that, in a way, this is kind of sobering, right? You're seeing this video of people like polishing your phone. Like, there's like that's what they're doing all day, just for us to have this like crazy one thousand dollar thing in our pocket. It's like, damn. And then just imagine all the videos of people like destroying them on on camera yeah. for YouTube views and stuff. I We're look. I you know me. You know I'm against that. I'm a hundred percent against that. <laughs> yeah. I I I if I get fired for saying I think destroying a product for views i think that's total crap <laughs> so my bosses can holler at me but i it's such you know people the thing is more like it started on youtube and other people did it like do we really have to do that no yeah you know it's gonna break if you like that's shoot it with a high round like a high rifle round or something or drop it from the top of a building i think we're, we're pretty we're like, sure it's gonna break yeah, like we're a technology website. We should love technology. We shouldn't fucking oh, we shouldn't destroy it. <laughs> oh, he's getting passionate about. He's passionate no, about this. Everybody, me off. It really pisses me off. We should not. If you love technology, don't destroy it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Like, there's people like. Thank you. Yeah, that video. Okay, I'm off my rocker. <laughs> It is kind of, it is kind of a, you know like an inside look at how an iPhone gets made. And when I first saw it too, I was like. It's you know it's, it's it's a little bit shocking. Is that that might be like Foxconn or something? Who knows where yeah, that is? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It's just sobering to me. It's just yeah, sobering to me. It is just perspective. All right. Um, as we transition over to something more worth talking about, the iPhone Seven S. <laughs> so leak leak schematics of the iPhone Seven S have started to indicate or look to indicate that the phone itself, the body itself, will be slightly larger, um, only by literally hundreds of a millimeters larger in all dimensions, height, width, and thickness. Oh. Hey. So it's because, right, we know that this these new iPhones are reportedly going to have glass surfaces on the back, and what that's believed to do is support wireless charging. So uh, in addition to that, right, if you're, you're going to have a phone that is a little thicker because of adding that layer of glass. So there you go. That, that would make sense why the iPhone 7s will be at least slightly thicker. Someone, someone on Periscope likes to say girth, so we'll <laughs> use that if you want. It's gonna be girthy, <laughs> girthier. Now, I mean, like the thickness in Apple in like Apple measure is like that's enormous, right? If you're, yeah. if you're oh. someone from Apple, like that's huge. Oh, you know, you know Johnny Ive right now. He's just he's just shaking his head like yeah. he's upset. Can't take it. He can't take. I, I can't it. believe you made my phone thicker. <laughs> he can't take it dude he can't take it um just a quick thing also people have been calling us and asking us about the iphone se uh just to let you know the last we heard about it is that it's rumored uh to come out sometime in early 2018 most likely really just a processor upgrade my hunch is that touch id will still be on it because it's not like they're gonna put in the whole new face id system maybe they will if it's cheaper but if it's the iphone se it's that same form factor that's what you should expect, just more of a faster processor to support the new OS. So uh, we'll see when that comes out. But rumors say early 2018. Nothing is pointed to us seeing it this September as well. So, yes. Okay, you know what? I think we should just go to the calls, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. I was trying to find this. Cue this up for uh, your talk about the iPhone SE. And then... You used to. You used to. <laughs> 
I kind of dropped the ball yeah. on that one. <laughs> okay, hey, let's get I, the calls. But that's that's classic, man. People that watch the Apple Vine know that's classic. It's a classic. Yeah, but, yeah. But <laughs> you used to make the greatest iPhones. Innovation number one. Make the greatest iPhones. I like that move right there. It's my favorite dance move you do right here. Now you go iPhone SE. All right, that's it. We hit, we hit the hook. We hit the hook. We hit the hook. I love that. <laughs> All right, thank you Watch all for it. calling, guys. We got a lot, a lot of good calls this week. It's like it took me and BT like an hour to go through all the calls. <laughs> all right, tons so of calls. Here we go. Call number one. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and with all the hype going around the iPhone 8 release, you know, and there being three iPhones this year, everybody seems to get hyped on that. But you know, what's the plan for that? phone into the future is apple going to just have three phones from now on and you know how are they going to roll out the tech on the the iphone future into the you know upcoming phones or is this just going to be a one and done deal thanks i love first of all i love how he like mentally called it the iphone future our indoctrination of getting that name spread has completely worked. It's working, yes. It's totally working, but Apple's not going to use it. Um, what I was going to say is, you know, there, Apple has made more money than ever with the multiple models of phones. I think they're going to stick to it. This is Tim Cook's mo: different levels, higher margins on the higher phone, different price points. They took really the Samsung model of multiple size phones and adopted it themselves, and they're making more money from it. Uh, you know, we we skipped the story because we want to get to the calls, but in the based on our report, the number who who are the top two selling phone models this quarter from April to June? It's the iPhone Seven at Seven and the iPhone Seven Plus. Those oh, were yeah. the top two selling phones. So imagine if they only had one model. Fine, it would be the top selling phone. But now you're talking about two phones at two different sizes. And now we're gonna talk about three phones at three different sizes. Yeah, there those it's most likely, at least for an individual model, not selling the most phones. We know Android phones are gonna just destroy as a total how many iPhones are sold worldwide, but for a specific model. It's going to be no surprise if we see, end up seeing iPhone 8, iPhone 7S, and iPhone 7S Plus on the top three uh, the next time they do something, you know, once the iPhone is out for a good amount of time. I, I would to- It's totally believable to me. So they're going to stick with three models that, like anything, they always eventually roll out and adopt the new technology. I think this 10th anniversary phone is kind of going to be one of those benchmarks where this is at least – from a feature standpoint, a new design, because I know people are like, the iPhone is the same design every year. Yeah, it pretty much is. But this is kind of that next jump for an actual form factor that feels different. Although it may look the same, it's going to feel a whole lot different. So that'll be kind of like eventually the 7S and stuff will go away just like they've always done. Just think about how they always done. Every two years, basically, that new form factor comes in. I think it's. It might also be a little heavier if it's more glass on there. I feel like it's going to be a little heavier, so it might feel a lot might, different in people's be. hands. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Okay. Next call. Uh, here we go. Hey, yo, what's up? This is Austin from Monticello, Arkansas. Anyway, my question for y'all is: Do you think since Face ID is coming to the iPhone eight and Touch ID won't be included since they couldn't get it to work under the glass, then future iPhones they will even use Touch ID anymore if Face ID works out how they plan? Do y'all think that the iPhone 7, 7S could be the last iPhones we see to actually include Touch ID? All right, y'all. Thanks. Have a good one. The answer is with exception of an upcoming updated iPhone SE, absolutely. I I think those will be the last two phones that have Touch ID because they're trying to get under that glass. That's the goal. Not only are they trying to do it, Samsung is trying to do it. Other companies are doing it. Qualcomm themselves, I believe it's Qualcomm, already has the prototype for a fingerprint sensor through the glass that will be, uh, they'll start selling those components sometime in early 2018. So it's coming not only to Apple, but to multiple manufacturers. Cool. All right, next call. Hi, this is Kat from Tokyo. I'm an American, but I currently live here, and I'm wondering about the iPad mini. I have an iPad mini too, and I want to buy a higher storage one, 
and I'm afraid they won't make an iPad Mini 5. There's blowout sales all over the city for iPad Mini 4s. Should I buy one? I don't like the size of any bigger iPads. Like, the iPad Mini 4 is for me, unless I make a 5. What should I do? What should she do? So we wanted to show love to Kat because, look, we have a rule here on the Apple Bite. If you're a girl and you call, you're going to get on the show. That's... <laughs> But I do not want you guys to be calling in squeaky high voices pretending to be girls. Hi, Brad. Just to get your um, call on. I want to get an iPhone 8. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Someone's going to do that now. <laughs> Someone is going to do that now. Hi, Brian. I just want to let you know. I love Beach and Tones. It's a great show. <laughs> Whoever, I'll let one of those through. But you better ask a good question. Yeah. I'll let one through. That's we'll let one through. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Should so, you wait? I don't, the, the next, they just announced the iPad, or they just dropped the price of the iPad mini for, I don't think we're going to see an iPad mini, uh, I think that's going to go away in about two years. I don't think we're going to see it anymore because we have these large screen phones. It's obviously cannibalized that. And then the 10.5 inch iPad is the same size roughly as what the iPad 9.7 inch used to be. I think the mini is great. I would, I would still love if they, if somehow I don't, I'm not saying like, actually, no, I would put it, if I had a car and I wanted to install an iPad on it, I would put a 10.5 inch iPad in the dash if I could. I always wanted to put an iPad in my dash, but it just wasn't ready yet. So, you know what? I don't, I don't, I think it's going to be gone in about the next few years. I really do. It would be dope to have an iPad in your dash. I haven't, I haven't thought about that. That'd be cool. I mean, that's kind of what the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, t uh, Elon Musk car that, what are they called? <laughs> The Tesla S? Tesla, yeah, they all have like an iPad. Like not an iPad, but the Model, they have 3, like a the Model 3. The Model 3. Yeah, yeah. They have like a tablet. Yeah, the Model 3. It. That looks cool. I like that. I'm on that waiting list because I'm like, I'm going to put down the deposit because by the time I get it, maybe I'll be ready to get a car. But if not, oh well. Word. Get one, I, dude. I mean, that would be dope. Let's go. Let's roll out together, man. Let's go. <laughs> let's roll. Let's go hit on, hit, hit on some chicks in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Like, honestly, that's, that's like a nerd car. It's like, <laughs> it's not a hot car. Like, it's not no sports car. It's like, oh, hey, there's that tech bro guy in the car and his Tesla Model 3. I just want to, like, have the self-driving feature on and watch movies on my iPad in the dashboard. I like that. Yeah, yeah. All okay. right, next call. Next call. Hey, this is Trevor from Seattle. Do you think the power button is being enlarged on the iPhone 8 because there might be a possibility of them adding Touch ID onto it, or no? Power button Touch ID. Yeah, there, there's rumor, you know, the designs have shown an elongated power button. There are phones that have had a fingerprint sensor on that power button. I believe Sony phones have incorporated something like that. Forgive me if I'm wrong, internet world who knows everything more than all of us combined, so we're not always right. Um, but... If if they needed to integrate that in the future and that is an option by elongating the power button, maybe. There's no reports that show anything that indicates that the next iPhones will have it. So uh, we will wait and see. But that it's all speculation right now, like a lot of the stuff that we talk about. But guess what? We're listening. It's fun because we love talking about this stuff. So we'll see. Okay. All right, next call. Okay. A couple left here. Brian Tong. Whoop, whoop. Hey, what's up, homies? What y'all doing, man? Dude, I can't lie. Um, I, I called you a while back about a question about jailbreaking, but I'm a big time jailbreak fanatic. I love my Apple products when I get to jailbreak it. Dude, Apple's been tightening down so hard on the jailbreak people and not allowing the jailbreaks to pull through. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm kind of thinking about ditching Apple. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> Apple's cool and stuff, but dude, you know, it's freaking boring at the same time, you know? <laughs> you can't theme it. You can't download music from Pandora or anything like that unless you got a premium subscription. I kind of like all that stuff. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. Much love, homies. Much love, everybody. Y'all be good. Peace. Whoa, whoa. I love I love the positive vibe on that call. I love the fact that I feel like that homeboy right there, if he saw me on the street or he saw us on the street, he would just talk to us just like that. Oh, yeah. Totally. That's just like, that was just like, that's real. Um. I'm look. If he's gonna leave, he's gonna leave. I mean, you're not. The thing is, you're not gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> he might though. He said it was getting boring. No, no, I, no, I no. kind of agree with him. That I it right, is boring no. now. You know, it's like the same thing that we've had for 
10 years now. So it is it is kind of a little boring, you know. It is boring until it unlocks with your face. <laughs> I'm like, just wow. messing around. We're gonna do. We're gonna I be got like, ex- yeah, we're gonna be excited about that. Like the first two times we do it, and then it's gonna be like, yeah. okay, now I'm gonna look. It's gonna at my be exciting for like day one, day two. Yeah. In your face. <laughs> In your face. Samsung, Samsung users are gonna be like, yeah, I, I've had this for a while, bro. Yeah. Had All Android while, bro. users do that. All right. <laughs> Next call. We got two. This one I'm gonna have to cut it off early because this guy went a little long. So let's let's try this. Beach and Tong, what's up? Jess again. Houston, Texas. I uh, want to uh, quickly go over the um, iPhone for Life program. Uh, I don't know how it is for every carrier, uh, but with at least the one that I'm working with, if you aren't quite at that 50% mark, like say your 12 months is in December, not at September, um, you just have to pay the remaining months. So if you got a $27 a month iPhone 7 and you got three months left before you're at your halfway mark, well, 27 times three, that's what you're paying, the whatever 70-something dollars is, and then trade in your phone, and then you're part of that iPhone for life. So you can still do it even if you're not smack dab on that 12-month uh, cycle. I uh, love the show. Houston, Texas, always listen to it when I'm driving to and from work. Uh, love the iPad Pro 10.5. Great Apple. Awesome product. All right, I'm kind of <laughs> He's like, he didn't even say it's a good app. It's like, great Apple. I'm telling you, that is that is one hell of a product this year. I'm, I'm, I got to give him major props, specifically with iOS 11, specifically. So so what do you think of the Apple, the, uh, a- Apple iPhone for life thing? So he's saying, if you want to get the next iPhone, you have to pay off what you, what you would owe for the next then, yeah. couple months or whatever you have left over. Basically, whatever's left on that contract you sign to cover it and then turn in your old phone, that makes sense. I mean, that's why we have people call because I don't deal with it that way. So there's a lot of people that are curious and it's it's unique to me. It's not unique to me. It's everyone does things like that. So that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. We got two more. They're real short. So let's knock okay. them out. This is Alan Brim from Texas. Chips and cards take longer. Apple Pay takes longer. Face recognition will take longer. But Apple fans don't care. <laughs> I care. <laughs> I care. I don't want things to take longer. Dude, I Apple care. Pay does not take... Okay, hold up. <laughs> Apple Pay is fast. Well, he's he's talking about when we get the new facial unlock. But we don't know. We don't know how. We don't know how fast it's gonna be though. Yeah. We. I'm all I'm saying is I can't. I'm never gonna speak on it or judge it. I mean, we might give hot takes because that's what we're basically doing most of the time. But to say like it's slower, we don't know that. But I I get what I get what my man was it Alan. I get what he's saying. We had a lot of callers from Texas this week. I don't. I guess we got a lot. Don't of fans mess with in Texas. everything's bigger in Texas. Apple buy extra crunchy is big in Texas, bro. Yeah, don't mess with Texas, baby. Love it. That's where I was born. Okay. Really? Yeah, Houston, Texas, baby, Space City. Okay, here's the last call we got. Hi, uh, this is Prell from Texas, and I was had a question about the <laughs> camera on the iPhone eight that's coming. What if you get a black eye or something? Or your <laughs> eyes swollen, or lip is swollen. You're gonna have a. As long as your phone's still gonna be able to um, unlock. What was this guy's name again? Hang on a second. Wait. Uh, this is Prill from Texas. Prill. Can't really. Trell. Prill. 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 Like yeah. He gets in a lot of. I think. Does he get in a lot of fights? You think? Like, is he boxing or something? Is he a boxer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's worried about fat lips and uh, black eyes. Well, here's. Here's the thing. I don't. I actually think that the pig. If, if how about this? If Apple is smart, and they've seen what's happened with a lot of other tech technology gadgets that aren't able to pick up on changes or darker skin tones or pigmentation differences, the fact is that this infrared sensor, or you know, will be able to not only look at your face, but it'll have some ability to capture the depth of your face, which means. It could create a rough wireframe of your face in addition to who knows exactly what they're doing. If it's a combination of iris scanning, facial scanning, depth sensing, and then also the ability to really see if you're a living person. Like, right, if you're, I don't know, not moving or blinking because it's going to have to register faster than that. But there, there was some aspect of that facial recognition as a whole, all of these different pieces being used together. So I don't think it's going to just rely on like as if you were a photo that stayed the same all the time. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Like, 
You know, you know what I'm saying? Like we've seen all those stupid things. Like there was recently, I I can't remember. It was like a soap dispenser that like worked on a white paper towel, but not on like a black dude's hand. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff <laughs> like that. Oh, man. Like or facial recognition in certain apps that couldn't pick up people that had dark skin tone. So yeah. it's like that we've seen that a bunch. So I'm pretty sure that I'll give them the benefit of the doubt until it happens. But they're the type of company that tends to think about a lot of those things in general. Tends to. I would love to see their like testing facility where they're testing this stuff, <laughs> like giving it to different people and try this out. Okay. didn't work. Uh, let's get another guy in here real quick. <laughs> I don't know. That's it, man. We're done. Oh, we're done. Yeah, we're all done. Oh, my goodness. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with us. Uh, always love having you and talking to you and you guys and gals continue to make the show. What it is because the calls Give us some of that meat and potatoes. So continue to call us in 1-800-616-2638. Other than that, Beecham, have a great weekend, my friend. You too, man. We're doing it. We'll be back here next week. Uh, We have a special guest next week if all things come together. I won't tell you who it is, but it's going to be worth. It's pretty much the king of scoops in the Apple world. If you put it together, you'll know who it is. We'll see you guys next week, all right? Be safe. Peace. Peace.